Hey everybody, Scout Crafty here again. It's Friday, TGIF. Everybody loves our Friday, and uh, we got a lot going on today, uh, so let's get right to it. Okay, last week I was showing you extension cords. I brought out this one. We all had a laugh of, of how this was repaired. Actually, it's got a couple things about this cord that I thought was really funny that you might find funny. One of it, one of them is at the end of this cord, this is a uh, two-prong extension cord. Somebody cut off the, the little nub here so that you can't use a three-wire cord. And you can see what I mean by here. I could take a three-wire cord now, you know, with the grounding lug, and I could put it on here because they cut off that little... <laughs> which is fine if you're using two-wire, but you're not supposed to use grounded. That was a safety on there. So anyway... Uh, I, I use this, I will use this for my hedge trimmer. That's why I wanted it. But the first thing you have to do when you're, you're going to replace uh, or, or replace and fix a cut in the wire, just go through the whole extension cord. Make sure you don't have any more abrasions. And if you do, you know, cut off the whole section. I went through the whole cord. We had one other I just fixed and this one here. I'm going to show you real quick how I do it. Um, I like the cutters on this thing here. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to cut this. Uh, cord on each side of the damaged area okay now we discard this now here this is a two strand okay now the quickest way you got to get through the outside jacket okay the quickest way i found to get out now if you had a three conductor cord you would go about three inches uh two conductor you only have to go about two inches we'll go a little bit further we'll go about about here like this just over two inches and what you want to do is gently run this around the utility knife here until you have a slight score. You see, we, we got that little score there. You see that? Now you're going to bend it around. Okay. Now you see we're just cracking that surface. Now you're going to do it again very lightly. Okay. Until there you go. You see we're breaking through. You want to break through that surface with very you don't want to touch any of the wires okay so you have to be very careful and you see what i'm doing here and you could twist a little bit and there we go now we, we broke through that outer surface here you got a little bit there you just touch it with the knife okay again you don't want to uh touch any of the the bottom wires under here they have a special tool for this i don't have it but if you twist it and there we go we have that cord off of there without touching any of the wires underneath now what you want to do there's always this is called a strain relief cord it gives strength to the extension cord this is very important a lot of people don't realize that if you just tape up the two wires or solder or whatever you do all the strain is going to be on the wires and not this i'll show you how we get around that later now we're going to cut this off here this uh, strain relief here i'm going to cut that off okay and then what we're going to do is we're going to strip back these wires now what we're going to do is we're going to stagger the wires we're going to cut the white short on one and the black short on the other side and strip them down and i'll show you what okay, that you see like. what we did we stripped the wires here we short black on this side short one on this side so that when they go together they're staggered okay so they'll go together like this they'll be staggered that they can't touch each other even if they should come uh, you know, wear through there, whatever they do. But now what we're going to do is before you do anything, make sure you slip on your heat shrink. That's always something we forget, right, to put on. So put your heat shrink on the long sides of the wire. We're going to do the green on one side and the black on the other. And now we're going to splice these together. But when we twist them together, we're going to twist them this way. We're not going to go side by side. We're going to twist them this way together. The type of splice we'll be using is what's called a Western Union splice, and it's very good for this. It should look like that when they're twisted together. Now we're going to solder them. Make sure you have a good solder joint all the way around. Once you have it heat shrinked on here over the solder joint, we're just going to run a light coating of electrical tape over. Now, here's something that I do with my cords. And what I do, remember we took off that cord, that uh, strain relief that was inside. Well, I try and make another strain relief because remember I was telling you the jacket takes a lot of, of stress on here. So I have some electrical tape with the sticky side up. What I do is I lay a piece of cord of, uh, of that contract that... Uh, uh, masonry cord over here. And then I will roll this over onto the cord like this, and I will uh, do that three times. 
to have three cords running across. I'll show you what that looks like. Once you have the cords wrapped around like this, then you flip the cord back over here and run that tape over here. So that's what locks it in so that it can't pull out. And I'll show you what that looks like. Then we're gonna cut off these short tails. Okay, now you see how these cords are wrapped around and that is, that will take any pressure. That is super strong. One quick wrap of tape around here and then we'll slide up the heat shrink. Now the last coating of heat shrink on here is this uh, Wi-Fi. I bought this in a, a 50 foot spool. It's uh, That'll be a, probably a lifetime for me. But what's interesting about this is this is adhesive lined. It has a hot melt glue in there and a three to one shrink ratio. When that shrinks down, that hot melt glue really holds it tight that it won't slip or or fall off. It's very highly rated, this stuff. And uh, here you can see the repair. Now this is a uh, as uh, two forms of heat shrink, electrical tape, and uh, more, most important, the, sh the strain relief, that this is super strong. This won't come out. That is strong because now you got that cord running around it and uh, taped over here and then held down. So that's a good repair. You know, a while ago, I had somebody ask me about my meter and uh, I said I was gonna go into it more. Uh, you know, some people don't have uh, what's known as a volt ohm meter. This is considered a volt ohm meter or a tester, an electric tester. And this happens to be, if, if there's one item that I can convince you to have, if you don't already have, it's this here. You, everybody needs a volt ohm tester. I'm going to show you why. If you don't have one of these, it is the best addition to your shop you can imagine. Now, <clears throat> this one here is an older craftsman. But I just went here on Amazon, the uh, $10 shipped, $10, very popular meter, been around for a long time, nothing new. Let me, let's take a look at it and I'll show you why even the inexpensive ones are so good to have. When I was a younger man, I remember I was 15 years old, I bought my first multimeter and I paid, I think it was $12 for it, which was a lot of money for me as a kid. And uh, I still have it. I remember giving it to my dad, who enjoyed it and loved it. But this one here is a uh, a ten dollar meter. You can see here what it comes with. Uh, let's check it out and give it a test. Now, uh, although this might look a little confusing over here with all these numbers, it's we're only going to use not all of them. Mostly here, you'll see there are two settings. Let's start here, and we'll t we'll go counterclockwise. When you see this here. This is voltage, and this is DC when you see a straight line and a dotted line. That's direct current. So this is the voltage that you would check if you were checking your, your batteries or you want to check something in your car. And depending on how much volts you're going to test, you would this is the range. So if you're going to test something that had 12 volts, you would put it in the 20 volt range. So you always put it in whatever range over what you're going to be using next. This down here in the yellow is has to do with your ohms reading and we'll talk about that later and over here uh on the right, upper right here this is voltage and you see that little squiggling line that's like a sine wave and this is for alternating current so if you're going to check 200 like here in the united states you want to check the voltage in your house you would go to 200 in the uk because it's 220 you would go to 500 you always go to the range higher than what you think you're going to be testing next over here this here is has to do with current or your amperage, okay? And uh, when you're checking your amperage, this is the uh, the uh, gauge you're gonna the range you're gonna go over here. Most of the times you won't be checking that, but down here, there's three holes. And this is where you put your your black always under common where it says common. You put your black lead, and then your red lead goes here, and you can see it is fused. So that if you touch something, you shouldn't, it'll pop the fuse. But if you're going to use current over here with the direct current, you got to put the red into here. So most times, this is all you have to worry about. These two and a couple up here. And let me show you. First of all, this comes with batteries, which I'm shocked. Super lightweight. Uh, when you turn it on, let's go to, uh, if we were checking alternating current here, we'll put it over to 200. And you can see here what it reads. Now we'll put the leads in and over here has a backlight, very nice backlight, right? That's always a good thing to have. And it has a hold feature, which I always like that a lot of meters don't have. So what do you say we uh, plug it in 
and see what we got now, going one on. nice feature this has it has a flip out stand which comes in handy especially for here because we get wash out uh, with the lighting now i have it hooked up to ac 200 i wanted to check the variant the variac to see if the knob how accurate the knob is so what we're going to do remember there's two slots here the thinner one on the right here is the hot which is the red so we're going to put the red there the black here just push it in you can see we have 39 volts ac 39 point and now i'm going to turn this up here and you can see when I turn it up, it'll show on the meter exactly. So now I could check how this uh, works. You can see where my needle is here. Let me just, now my needle is over here on the, on the gauge. Let me bring it up and you can see uh, how accurate this is. These are never accurate and they're known not to be. So you can see I'm at 100 volts here, but here on the, on the knob, it says I'm at 87. So you can see, and you can never trust this volt, this knob here on a variac. You always got to go by a, a, ga a meter. Let me go up to 100. That's 100, but you can see here I'm at 114. You see? Now I'll go to 105. I'm at 121. So that's why you never trust this one here. They have a, another meter here, and this one here says it's much more accurate. This one here says 120. So you can see here this this meter here let me show you here is much more accurate can you see that there than the uh than the top knob this is just an approximate so that's how you check voltage for ac now if i want to check the voltage coming into the house i could check just like this here and you could see here at 122 volts which is very good ac so that's one reason everybody needs Next one of these. most common usage is continuity, which means you want to see if something's connected. <clears throat> if we're going to put, put it to ohms, if you look over here, this is ohms. And it's got a little microphone here or a little speaker right here. You see that little sounding? So we put it on there. Okay. And then when we touch the two together, hear that beep? That lets you know that you have continuity. So... What you're going to do here, let's say we needed to check, we just did this extension cord, we, we tried it out, we want to make sure everything's good. The first thing you do is you touch the two prongs together, you should not hear a beep, if you do it's shorted, so obviously we don't have a beep here. Now this is non-polarized, these uh, cords, so what you would do is you would touch it here, stick it in here, nothing, so you stick it in this one, there we go, there's the beep, you see? So that means that this is connected to here this one should be connected to here and there we go so that's you know we always use this for checking your cords to make sure that so that's fine to plug into the outlet another check for continuity let's say you have an extension cord somebody patched it you don't know if they did the correct patching they might have connected black to white and white to black so you don't know you could plug this in and have a problem you always check it. So here we go. We should have black to black should give us continuity. And that's how you'll know. So you touch one lead here to black. Remember, there's no very low voltage going through here. So you don't have to worry about touching it. Black to black and here. And you can see we have continuity, which is good. We'll touch black to white. Nothing, which means there's no short. So that's how you know. That's another way to trace a line. You can't have enough uses for this. Let's check DC voltage. Okay, we got to check a battery, so we don't know. We, got, we don't know how these batteries are. We're going to go to 20 volts, which is right here, direct current. Remember the line and the dots, DC. Now, uh, what you have to do is you're going to take, obviously, the red goes to the positive. You touch it like that. Just hold it on with your hand. Touch it down here, and this will give you the voltage. And you can see here, this battery is 1.55 volts so this battery is good because it's only rated 1.5 volts this also is a 1.5 this is a c cell same thing touch the positive to the top negative to the bottom this one here you can see is a, is a dead battery at 70.75 volts so this one here is no good again in, in, indispensable if you want to check your automobile to see how many volts your battery has you put it over here excellent okay another test real quick let's say you want to find out which one of these leads is hot 
There's a couple ways you could do it, but I'm going to use an extension cord. Remember, I always told you that the shorter cutout is hot and the longer one is neutral. And this is the ground. So you take your black to ground. We have it on AC 200 volts, right? We put the into the ground. We touch the ground. Now, when I put it in here, we should get no reading. And again, you have no reading down there. You could see. But when I go to here, what do we have? 121 volts, you can see. So that is our hot lead and it's it's set up correctly. Now how the hold button works here, I'm going to plug the cord into a uh, into a plug here and you can see this is my voltage coming into the house, right? Now if I wanted to wait and see if the voltage got high, let's say if it got up to 120 volts and I was waiting and waiting and when it finally got to a point, let's say I thought it was the highest it was gonna be, I could hit hold and that would hold that number even though it's no longer connected. And it'll hold that number until you hit hold again and, and then it'll clear it. Okay, so in closing, there are so many uses for the uh, multimeter, the volt -ohm meter. And if you don't have one, I really, really can't suggest enough that you buy one and uh, you won't be sorry. Eventually you'll use it. That meter did go up to $12, but still it's such a bargain. Such a nice little meter. I have, I must have a, a few i got some nice old ones and things like that i love them let me know in the comments if uh, if you think a volt ohm meter if you if you have one if you have any unusual uses that we didn't cover and um thanks so much for tuning in take care now hope you have a great weekend Bye bye